welcome back to the Pearl Up and Die podcast. My name is Jaden, and I'm coming to you from Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, today is December 27th. It is the last Friday of the month, so pat on the back. It's two in a row. <laughs> I promised last time that I was going to try to do it. Second Friday, or last Friday of every month, so hey. Um, yeah, so anyways, let's just jump right in. This is a knitting podcast, um, sometimes sewing, a little bit of cross stitch. Um, I like to share my FOs, my whips, and uh, some dream knits. And a little bit of stash enhancement if I have it, which I do not today, so yay. Um, yeah, so where you can find me around the internet and around um, on Instagram, you can find me at Little Prairie Pearl on Instagram and Creations on a Whim at uh, Ravelry. And if you want to follow my business account that I own with my sister, um, it's Midnight Cravings. So we are indie yarn dyers. So, yeah. Um, I don't know where to start. So in the last month, so I've been gone for a month. Um, I did a lot of knitting, but um, I don't have one of the things to show you. But let's start with um, what I'm wearing. I'm so excited. I finished my once and floral sweater. So this is by Maxim Sear. Um, I think that's how you say his name. His last name is C-Y-R. So I'm going with Sear. Um, but you know him maybe online as Max the Knitter. And so this is a yoke sweater. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can maybe see it a bit better. We go. So it is a, um, a yoke sweater uh, knit in the round. Um, there is color work, so you can see my floats. Um, yeah, so you're holding this sweater is worked um, top down in the round as much as possible. Well, the whole thing seamless. It's a really great sweater. I really, really enjoyed working with it, working on it. Uh, this was a bit tricky, the yoke. Um, in some places you are holding three colors double uh, right in this area. Here, I'm going to zoom back in. Look at me. I'm like all official like. So right in here. So there's like the center of the rose and that is done in the same color as your main color of your sweater. So right there you're doing holding three and actually probably down in this area too um, where the leaves are leaves is uh, worked with three colors. So it's a little bit tricky. Um, it, this wasn't my first color work, but it was my first color work in a very long time. So I did have a little bit of trouble with my tension, but it all blocked out uh, beautifully when I, I didn't actually, I haven't actually blocked my finished sweater yet. I just started wearing it because I was so excited. <laughs> but um, yeah, what else was I gonna say? I've lost my train of thought. Oh, right, I steamed it with my iron. I just kind of pressed it uh, really gently. And yeah, it worked out fine. It blocked out really nice. It took away all the puckers that I was worried about. And then I just knit down a tube. There's no shaping. So it was super easy. Um, super, super happy with it. The only thing I don't super love, I say super a lot. Apparently this is the super podcast. But the only thing I don't really like about it, and it's completely my my knitting it's not the pattern the pattern actually calls for full length a uh, full length sleeve where's my arm there we are full length sleeves but i was like i was talking on the last podcast i always push my sleeves up anyways and so i figured knitting the last seven inches would just be a waste of my time because i'd always be pushing it up to my elbows anyway so i decided to cut it off at three quarters so i didn't have enough decreases because if the arm would have kept going, it would have been decreasing down to the to the wrist and it would have been nice and snug down there. But because I just ended it, um, it's still a little bit big. And then I just did my my uh, ribbing. And so the ribbing is a little bit big. It's a little bit um, it puffs up right there. You know, Yeah, there you go. You can see that. See how it bumps up right there. So I'm just going to rip back this. I'm going to pick up the stitches again right before the ribbing. Sorry, I keep looking at myself so I can see you. But I'm going to rip it back just before the ribbing and go down a needle size. I might even knit a few more rounds and do a couple more decreases and then go down to quite a like quite a bit smaller. I think I think this ribbing was done with a 3 millimeter or a 2.75. I might go down to even like a 2.25 just cuz I find that it's even it's quite, 
it's quite stretchy and it's quite stretched out so I wouldn't mind to have it a little bit tighter my one at the bottom here I'll see if I can stand up and show you it does it too a little bit Ooh, I need to be just a wee bit taller back up a little bit yeah there we go so you can see that this one does it too but I haven't blocked this so maybe that's what I should do before I do anything drastic like rip out my ribbing but yeah so whoo, there it is turn turn so yeah I think it fits really awesome super happy with it whoa got a new setup almost fell off my chair <laughs> that would that wouldn't have been edited out had I fallen over <laughs> just don't want to do that I would hurt my chiropractor would be like killing yourself here so that was what I did I finished that super happy with it again with the supers I obviously am nervous <laughs> or something um yeah so when I casted this off, oh, the, I want to say the only other alteration I made to the pattern was the, um, the collar. So in the original pattern, it also calls for a one by one rib. And I really liked how the, where the neck was sitting already. So I was worried that if I um, picked up those stitches and then it even an inch, it was going to be coming up too high where it would be uncomfortable for me. So I just went I actually really liked how the, the edge was rolling because it was just stockinette and it was just ever so slightly flipping forward and I didn't think that looked bad at all but I wanted it to be finished so I picked up a knit um, I picked up a knit eye cord like an applied eye cord and that was quite simple I probably I didn't really pay attention to where I was starting so it's actually I think I don't know somewhere in here right here I think I can feel it I think is my join but I mean unless you knew it was there which now you do because I told you but it's not super noticeable so I'm okay with it so after I was done knitting that I wanted a couple of quicker projects um, just because this one took forever seeing that it was a fingering weight sweater and I swore I wasn't going to cast on another fingering weight sweater my next one was gonna be worsted you'll see what I'm working on next but fo next fo <laughs> it's quite drastic but drastically differently colored that's how you say it right so anyway <laughs> I decided um, I really really wanted to knit something out of our one of our new colorways in the shop which is some um, oops kick the thing which is called foliage and it's like these beautiful autumnal colors and uh, I'll insert a picture because I've Tara is now wearing it. I knitted it for Tara and we've put a big pom pom on it and it's awesome. But uh, I wanted to knit one in two sizes. And so this is the second one. So prepare your eyes. It's very bright. <laughs> Oops. I am not used to how I do it. So, anyways, it's just really quite simple beanie. So I've designed this. Um, I put it up. I put the picture up, um, the one of Tara wearing. And I mentioned that it's going to be written up soon and it's going to be needing testers. Again, I have, I said that I would be needing testers at some point and I got a gajillion and one volunteers, um, which was great, but uh, I only need like four. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I, I just kind of left it there because I wasn't, I'm not ready to call for the actual, I'm not doing the official call yet. Um, I'll talk about future knitting, um, but there's a couple of balls right there that I want to redo the hat. Um, just because once I blocked out Tara's hat, it ended up being too big and now it's too slouchy, so I need to redo it. But anyways, it's just a beanie with some fun decreases. I don't know if they're super fun, but I did some decreasing on the top. Well, obviously, it's a hat that needs decreases. But, okay, but it has this really awesome cable I love this cable it's got some interest in there um, with some yarn overy things and I can't tell you how it's done because then I give the pattern away but see like the cable really pops when you when you block it and my problem is that it was it fits really good now before it's blocked so yeah I really like it but once I blocked it it just grew because I mean being super wash so I'm gonna re-knit it again um, two of them again 
Oh, one on worsted and one in DK, just so I have, just so I have um, better, un like better gauge for when I do do the test. So it'll be another a couple of weeks probably for sure. But this one is just knit from Knit Pick Swish. I think it's Swish Worsted. Yes, Swish Worsted in the Pickle Juice colorway, which is a discontinued color, which is almost too bad because it is, it's showing more yellow here, but it is like shockingly, eye searingly acid green. It was one of their brights. Uh, so when they came out with their neon collection a few years ago, yeah, it's, it's bright, but I love it. So my youngest daughter has claimed this hat and she looks really cute in it. So this one didn't go to waste either. I'm just not going to wash it. Or if I wash it, I'll throw in the dryer and get it to shrink back because it's just giant when I block it. So, yeah. So that was my three, I guess. My three um, FOs. But one, like I said, I'll keep a pop picture in. If you follow us on Instagram, you've seen it already. But I love it. It's awesome. Um, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so, um I guess FO, no, I just did FO's whips. So I'm only working on one thing right now. Um, I'm trying really hard to kind of stay to be a monogamous knitter right now. Don't know how well it's going to work, but um, I don't know. I just, I had so many things on my needles that was really stressing me out. And I just missed the days when it was just one thing and I really concentrated on it. And um, my kind of goal, I don't do resolutions. For New Year's, I just think I can better myself all through the year, and I don't need to wait until January. Um, and if I hold myself to a whole year's thing, it just wouldn't happen. So anyways, I don't do yet New Year's resolutions. But my goal, I do have a goal for the next unknown amount of time, whether it's a year, six months, or whatever, um, is to do some stashing down. I do have a lot of yarn. Um, more than I thought and it's kind of taking over my house I'm finding piles of yarn here and there stuffed everywhere and it's just causing me mind stress I guess it's almost like clutter I mean it's beautiful don't get me wrong I use it kind of as decor <laughs> but it's just it's a lot so and I mean I do not need 485,000 skeins of fingering weight yarn I just what am I going to do with it? I don't wear shawls. It's not warm enough for a hat unless I hold it double. It's just, it's kind of one of those things that when I was a new knitter, I just kind of bought all the things and hand dyers, especially when I got into indie dyed yarn, I bought one skein of this and one skein of that because it was a little bit pricey. And yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm more, I've decided I'm more of a sweater knitter. I do love and wear all my sweaters that I've knit. So I think that's where I'm going. I think I talked talk about that last time. I'd ramble all the time. So anyways, I don't know where I was going with that. I have no idea. Oh yeah, I was going with that. Yeah, so just 2020, um, I'm planning on doing some stash down. So be prepared to be watching me knit sweaters because that's the fastest way to get through yarn. So I'm actually eager to go through my stash and maybe do some de-stashing, but also see what matches and see what I can pair together to make some really uh, fun colorways. Um, it's like, like if I hold two fingering weights double or something like that and do some really fun sweaters. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what this year brings. But anyways, I still don't know where I was going with that. I'll rewatch it and I'll be like, oh yeah, I had a point to that. But anyways, ramble. So, hmm. I don't even know how to segue properly because I don't remember where I was going with that, but let's just move in. So um, once I was done those worsted weight hats, I remembered that I had some yarn in my stash. I talked about last month that I was wanting to try, we were going to be trying out a new base for the shop and that I wanted to give it a good test run. And so in order to do that, I wanted to actually knit it up into something that was going to be worn a lot, which is a top. So I started that. And this is my, what's left of my first ball. So yeah, when I, I said um, I was not going to knit a fingering, or a, yeah, a fingering weight sweater for a long time, it was the next thing I cast on. Because I'm a liar. <laughs> so ridiculous. So I'm, again, knitting with fingering weight. 
but this is the color of this one is called wildflower it's one of our um, fall colors well I actually think we came out with it more in the spring but it's kind of one of our vintagey colors and this is the new base uh, that I'm testing it's a single ply uh, a single ply superwash merino with uh, I think it's 8020 or 9010. I don't remember. But it's got linen in it. So here, if I can hold it up, see if it'll focus. Come on. There. You can kind of you can see the slubs in there, like especially right in here, and you can see the white where the white um, it doesn't the linen in it is what's doing that. That's the those slubs and the white bits. That's the linen because with uh, Indie dyed yarn or whatever like when Tara and I dyed the yarn uh, we use acid dyes and acid dyes are for protein fibers so like your alpaca llama or a llama alpaca your wool your silks um, nylon will take it uh, that kind of thing but linen is a cellulose fiber and you need to use a procyon dye which we do not use and uh, we don't have um, it's a completely different a technique to dyeing uh, cottons and linens and things. So what's really neat is that when you throw this bare yarn into the water, um, into the dye, the, the wool content of it will absorb the color, but the linen will not. So what ends up happening is you get a slightly uh, variegated look. So I'm going to show you what I'm working on. You can see what I'm talking about. So this is called the Noni, or Noni, I guess. It's by Pip and Pin, Megan Nodecker, and it's a, it's just a lightweight summer top. You can see in there, I think, the linen. But anyways, I love this base. Love, 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 love. So, and I love this pattern. I am a sucker for all of Megan's patterns. I pretty much, anything that she comes out with, I'm like, yeah, I'm knitting that. So this was actually one of her um, or shirts, tops, that she released for uh, Knit City in a Rainforest Knits book. So her and her sister Katie had done these patterns. Uh, there was this one, there was a tunic with the same pattern, and a cropped sweater of some sort, or cropped tee of some sort. Um, yeah, and they were amazing, and I just love them. And I just, I love Megan's patterns. We've got a similar body shape, and they always look amazing on her, so I know that if they look good on her, they will look good on me. She also has a very inclusive size range, which is really nice, because, uh, I mean, it's wonderful to be able to knit it um, in a size, in multiple sizes, I should say. So, yeah, I can't say enough good things about this pattern. If you're wanting something fairly simple, this is it. Just love it. So it's a very, very simple knit, actually. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to give away anything, but it's got this gorgeous um, stitch, like textured stitch up at the top that just hits you about here where the yoke is, and then you continue. Then it gets joined in the round so that you work the body round and round, and there's no sleeves. So I'll put a little bit of a two by or a one by one or whatever her pattern calls for. I don't remember, but a ribbing here. I don't know if you do an I cord or something around the neck, but I know it's nothing too major. Dropped a stitch. And yeah, so I'm at I'm about two inches into the body after I split for the sleeves and I've got to do about 15 inches. So I've got some time. It'll take me a while, but it's actually knitting up really fast. This yarn is just a dream to knit with. It frogs beautifully. It drapes like... It's just amazing. I love it so much. So I am going to be... Uh, yeah, once this is done, I'm really pushing to get it done quite quickly so I can start wearing the shirt so that I can get a good feel for how it, how it wears. And then, yeah, and then we can order it in and start dying it so really really looking forward to having this base out um hopefully for spring or before spring or you know whenever i can get my button gear and get this done so so that's it for knitting i mean that's it for um that's it for works in progress that's not it for knitting <laughs> so um yeah i guess i don't have a very long podcast today i guess 
which is fine. Um, so dream knitting, future knitting. It's not really dream knitting if I'm definitely planning it, is it? Future knitting. So like I was talking about before, those two hats that I showed you before that are yet unnamed, I'm going to re-knit them. So the worsted one is going to be here. It's on our velvet plum, which is on our hardy worsted base. So I just have to start it yet. Obviously, I'm really far into this one. <laughs> and then I decided to do a DK. Um, this is our comfort sport. And this colorway is called Daydreamer. So it's this one's like a gray mauve. It's got some tip lips of pink in there. And then it's speckled with like a deep purple. So these two actually go really well together, which is why I wanted, because when I go to take the pictures of the pattern, for the pattern, I want them to coordinate just for, um, yeah, so just so they look nice together in the pattern. You know, I don't really want this. That's, that's just no. So as much as the bright one is awesome. Sorry, I keep looking down. The camera's up here. Computers down here. I keep looking down. So that is uh, my future knits. And then these ones are also ones that I hand dyed. And this is an unknown colorway. It's kind of brown and pink. I don't know if you can tell. It's not really showing up that great, but it kind of looks like my sweater, but it's more pink. I'll maybe see if I can, I don't know, can you see that? I don't know, we'll see how it edits. But anyways, it's a brown, similar to this, kind of, or not this, uh, this? <laughs> it's all backwards. Anyways, I'm an idiot. So, my husband just snuck by, so I'm all distracted at this point, because <laughs> it's just awkward when there's somebody else in the house. And, um... Yeah, and I'm going to hold, and I dyed up some mohair in, I believe that's wildflower. No, it was just a one of a kind. I used some random dye, but it's like a pinky. So what I'm planning on doing with this is the cozy up um, comfy cowl. So I've done the comfy cowl already as it's written with the, and I think I showed it last week, where I did it in sandcastle and then the blocks of color. And I really like it. I love it. It's actually, but it's a shop sample and I want one for myself. So I thought it might be cool to do, hold this as like the main from here up and then hold this double in the, in the color sections instead of the chunks of color. I'll just hold this. So I'm looking forward to casting that on. Again, it's fingering weight. So I don't know. I say I want to knit with heavier weights and then I can make a complete liar out of myself and only knit with fingering weight. So, well, like I said, I have a huge stash at this point, and it's almost all fingering weight, so I guess that's just how my life is going to go from now on. And, yeah, the other um, future knitting is this stuff over here, and it is, I'm really excited about this one, actually. Uh, I cannot remember the designer. I'll have to look her up. She just the one that does the sock arms, the sock arm sweater, so it's like a fingering weight sweater and then you use like sock yarn to knit the sleeves anyways she had a sale when she was doing the indie gift along and she had one a, a color or a, a sweater called narcat and i thought it was absolutely hysterical my youngest daughter is in love with narwhals she loves narwhals and she loves flamingos and all these weird animals and one of her favorite books is called narwhal and jelly and if you've got kids about not around seven, eight, nine, you'll know that book. But she adores it. So I saw this sweater and it's just like a plain raglan sweater with a narwhal face and horn coming up here. It's so hilarious. I loved it so much. So I bought that pattern and I'm going to use these. So way back when we had our grand opening, we did a, like a dye demonstration where we put two yarns in one pan and two yarns in another pan. Uh, pan A had hardly any water and pan B had lots of water and we used the exact same dyes, the same techniques, sprayed them the same way, like drizzled them with uh, speckles and that kind of stuff just to see how changing just one variable will change how your colorway looks 
it was so much fun. So this was from that demo. So this was actually from pan A. So you can see that the speckles are a lot more defined. And this was pan B, where there was lots and lots of water. And so it ends up being a more watercolor look because the speckles bled out a lot more. So in order to knit the sweater, it calls for a DK. So these are light fingering. Um, this is the Lush base that our shop carries. But uh, I'm going to hold these two double just to like to get to make sure that the speckles spread out um, a little bit more. So I'm going to hold these double throughout so it won't be so color blocked, I guess. And then the narwhal is going to be, what did I do with the blue one? You guys see it, don't you? Oh, no, there it is. It's underneath. <laughs> it's like it's sitting right behind me, isn't it? But anyways, the blue is going to be this, um, it's called Droplet. And I'm going to hold it double as well. So this is kind of like a tealy aqua blue. And then she wants the narwhal horn. She wanted it yellow, but I thought that was going to be a little bit uh, interesting. So I convinced her to do a white one, but this one's got gold sparkle in it. I really can't tell if you guys can see anything because my computer, my screen froze. And so I'm just seeing a really unflattering picture of myself down there. So <laughs> it's really bad. I wish I could screenshot it for you. But anyways, that is my next knit. So I've got to finish a t-shirt for myself, two hats, and start a narwhal sweater for my youngest daughter before I podcast next. So you guys have something to see. <laughs> so I have all the plans. And yeah, so that's it for knitting, I guess, because I've showed you what I'm wearing. I've showed you what I've finished working on, future working on. And so the only other thing I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, a um, update on was the little cross stitch that I was working on. So I remember remember last week I was telling you that we've cross started cross stitching me and the girls and we've really been enjoying it. So this is almost done. Oh look, it finally unfroze. Haha, <laughs> I can see what I'm doing now. So anyways, oh my goodness, he is hysterical. So I'm almost done doing the back stitching. I just need to do a little bit more on the pug. Um, so the back stitching has been kind of interesting here. Oh, yeah, you can see I need to do some on his tail. I still need to do some up here in his hair and around his face. And yeah, but the back stitching has been really fun actually because um, there's some sections that have three threads being held together to do a really thick line. And then there's other sections that's going to be just one. Um, let's see here. Can maybe see. Yeah, like you can see right around here, it's a thin line that's like just one thread. And then I right, think around his little mouth or his muzzle, I guess, is two. And then up around by his ears, it's a thicker line. There's three he three uh, threads held there. And so it just makes it give it a really sketchy look. Yeah, so I've got to do around his foot down here and around his tail. Um, and then there's also some of that metallic. Oh yeah, so last year, last time I talked to you, I didn't have the metallics in yet around the rainbow, so that's been finished. I don't know if you can tell that they're metallic, if they sparkle at all, but anyways, I adore it. I'm going to be sad to give them away. But I will, because I'm a good auntie. So yeah, that was that's for my niece who loves pugs. And after that, I'm not sure which cross stitch I'm going to start. I've got a whole ton. I've got a sand castle. It's actually an ice castle, but they did it in like beige. So it was like, looks like a sand castle. And I love sand castles. Um, so that worked out great. I've got like a cross stitch of some wellies that have like flowers coming out of them. And that's really cute. And then on Etsy, I've got about 483 saved. So yeah, I've got some cross stitching to do. <laughs> so oh, anyways, um, I think that's pretty much it. I don't remember the last time I had a podcast under an hour, and this is half an hour, so that's awesome. But I'm a little bit in a hurry today because we do have company. So I said I was going to do every every month on the last Friday of the month, and I did it even though we had a company. So, hey. But anyways, my sister is decorating cupcakes with them all at her house. 
and um, there's two extra kids. My kids are super loud. They've got their cousins, so they're like super duper excited. So I'm going to go rescue her. I'm not going to rescue her. I'm lying. She can deal with them. I had the kids all here this morning, so. <laughs> but I will go, and I will uh, bring my knitting and have a drink and enjoy my afternoon. So until next time, guys, we'll have, uh, have a great month, and we will see you soon.